Hey folks, so I want to introduce a vector notation that will allow us to write certain things about vectors much more compactly than we have been able to before. So first, um, a quick review. So this is about vector notation. Um, and I'm going to start with a review. So if we have a vector like this, um, one of the very first things we learned is that we can just write um, you know, a, an, an actual arrow to represent a vector. Um, and then we learned very quickly thereafter that if we place the tail of that vector on you know, an axis that's supposed to be like a horizontal and vertical axis, then we can draw components um, ax and ay. Um, and so, for example, I'll say that for this vector a x equals 3, a y equals 4. Um, so this representation right here um, is one, one representation of a vector. Okay, so that's one. Uh, this one would be another representation. Right? You could label the 3 and the 4 on the triangle itself. You could really put 3 and 4. Um, so we're going to add, I suppose, the box code around here on top. This, so one representation, another representation, um, and technically it's probably good for us to write vector hats over, over these. So that's another. And now I'm going to put in a third representation over here. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to define something called the unit vector. Um, so... Um, this new vector notation uh, is going to be something called the unit vector. And the unit vector is a vector that points in some particular direction and is of length 1. So, um, so a vector of length 1 uh, means so unit, vector, unit vector. It just means it has length one. Um, so for each direction you care about, there will be a unit vector corresponding to that. So um, I'll write a little t table here, and then the unit vector symbol. Um, so for the x direction, we just pick the letter i to correspond with the x direction. And we put a little hat over it. Um, if you're in French class, it's an axial circumflex. But in physics, we just call it a hat. And so we read this in the x direction. We read this as i hat, um, if you're going to read that out loud. Um, in the y direction, uh, we simply proceed forwards in the alphabet, i hat, j hat. Um, and if you need a z direction, then it's k hat. Um, which we will rarely use in, in AP Physics C mechanics, but um, we might as well have it. So what, is, what does this mean visually? Well, um, if we draw a coordinate system like this, okay, this is x and this is y, then um, the vector i hat is of length 1. Okay. Um, and sometimes I write my eyes with a little tail, but you know this is just the lowercase letter i. Um, but I also want to point out this is also i hat, right? and this is i hat. Uh, you can slide i hat around as long as it points in the x direction and has length one. That's i hat. And similarly, we could draw j hat, j hat here, but we could also draw it here, anywhere you want in the coordinate plane as long as it points straight up. Uh, J hat. So, and k hat would point into or out of the, the plane of the board, so I won't draw it here. Um, so that's really it. That's the notation. So if I go back to um, if I go back to my ways of drawing or depicting a vector, and I go back to my vector A. Remember, vector A had an x component of three or four, I think. Mm, no, an x component of three and a y component of four. One of those. Um, you will have access to that information. Um, so we could draw it like this. 
and we can write AX and AY. We could say AX equals 3, AY equals 4, but now we can also write A equals 3 I hat plus 4 J hat. Okay. Um, so I'll make sure that's on screen for you folks. Um, So let me rewrite that. So our third representation I'll write down here, A equals 3 I hat plus 4 J hat. So this allows you to write on a single line algebraically um, that it has a, an X component of length 3 and a Y component of length 4. Uh, so in, uh, you can convert between any of these representations. So if you're given an angle and a magnitude, um, absolute value sign, both symbols here mean the length of the vector. So if you're given these two pieces of information, the magnitude and the angle, you could convert over to x and y coordinates. And that also, you know, these numbers, the x number and the y number, always show up as the coefficients in front of um, i hat and j hat. So uh, that is if we're dealing with abstract vectors sort of in a math class that don't have units carried along with them. Um, I do need to clarify uh, what happens when you have units. So it's a little ugly and we often tend to ignore the units, um, especially in the middle of a physics problem, um, but it is important to know where the units live. So the units live um, like this. So if I were to write, uh, instead of A, so now if I have a position vector, uh, I'll use a velocity vector actually. Uh, so if I have a velocity vector v, um, and I know that the velocity vector is 2 i hat plus, or my, let's say minus, so we know we can use negative signs, minus 3 j hat. So that would mean that my velocity vector, if I'm graphing vx versus vy, then my velocity vector would have a positive 2 component here. Um, and a negative, did I write three? A negative three component here, right? So two and negative three. Um, so this would be V. So I've written this out in I hat J hat notation, but these components are actually two meters per second and three meters per second. And so the units actually sit in the coefficients here, meters per second, meters per second. Um, so they don't live inside the I hat and the J hat. I hat and J hat are abstract, basically abstract mathematical indicators there of length one and point in the, in the direction specified. So I goes as X and J goes as Y. So um, now you should be able to convert between angle and magnitude and I hat J hat notation. There's really no new physics here. It's just, it gives you a compact one line way of writing uh, a vector already expressed in terms of its components. Thank you.